Hi, I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Rockville and Gaithersburg. And I'm really psyched today because my special guest on this week's Kibitzing with Kagan is my wonderful intern, Jane Sanborn. Jane, welcome to Kibitzing with Kagan. Thanks for taking the time to chat. Hi, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. So let's start at the beginning. Why did you decide you wanted to intern for me? I've known since my sophomore year that I wanted to work in government after taking AP government in school. And I thought that this would be a really great experience to kind of learn about it and see what it's like. Okay. And why don't you talk about the structure? Because you're with us every day of the week for two hours. Why don't you talk about how you balance your class schedule? So I only have five classes as opposed to seven. And I get the last two periods off where I go, I work virtually. So I go home and I get on my computer and I do all the work that I'm sent that day for two hours. And then oftentimes I have to run back to school for rehearsal, but I do that five days a week, Monday through Friday. That's so cool. We are so lucky. Uh, so why don't you talk about just briefly what play are you in now? And that's that's another important part of your life. Yeah, I, I go to Wooten and we're doing The Little Mermaid as our spring musical. And I'm actually going to be Flounder. So I'm really excited for that. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, so what is it that you hoped to learn by by working with us for 10 hours a week? I wanted to learn how the legislative process worked and everything that you do that goes into it. I kind of knew the basic structure of everything, but all the behind the scenes work is so interesting and it's fascinating to work on. Great. And you're with us in Annapolis today as we tape this. You're in my office while I'm still at home in Rockville. Uh, what are you, what's different about being in Annapolis than working from home? It's a different environment. Usually I'm just sitting by myself in my room, but this is the second time I've gotten to be in Annapolis. And it's so cool to actually see everybody in person rather than just talking over email or Google Hangouts. It's so nice to see everyone in person. Absolutely. So let's pivot for a moment back to school. Speaking of virtual versus in person, talk about how the pandemic has been for you, uh, learning from home and then coming back in person. It was a very weird experience to start sophomore year is my first year taking AP classes and all those exams were canceled or changed. So I never really got to experience an actual AP test. And it was really difficult to learn my junior year, which everybody says is the most important year. And it was really difficult to focus and I didn't have the connection with my peers that I was used to and I rely on that a lot to understand the work and get the work done and it's very difficult to learn that way. So talk about the transition coming back. Coming back I was so excited to get to see everybody again and actually get to talk to my teachers because that's really important getting to see your teachers and create connections and working with my peers again is so important and it's so much easier to focus everybody's still one of my teachers pointed out that now everybody has their phones out all the time because during covid during virtual learning everybody was on their phones rather than paying attention so right. it's a lot easier to focus when you're actually in the classroom makes sense makes sense so um i have so many questions let's pivot back to the internship why don't you uh tell the stories of some of the some of the stuff that we've had you working on. I got to do a lot of research for the Renewable Energies for Nonprofits bill. Uh -huh. And that was really interesting to learn about all the different ways that we could do that because renewable energy is something that I'm really interested in and getting to see how the, all the different ways that we could apply it for nonprofits was really interesting to get to learn about. And I just really like doing all the research for all the different bills. I get to learn about so much that I never would have thought of before. Right. You've also uh, helped me prepare for a lot of other kibitzes. Uh, tell me someone that you researched, a past guest of mine that you found especially interesting. I just recently researched the Lieutenant Governor and that was really interesting. I get to come up with questions that the Senator will ask. And it's really interesting to kind of think of different perspectives of what different people might want to ask the person that the senator's kibitzing, and it's really cool. Yeah, and sometimes you come up with questions that I would never have thought of, and then sometimes 
you know, I use some of yours and I come, go in a different direction sometimes, but it's so helpful to have your ideas in the mix. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, what surprised you most about seeing, as you said, sort of the behind the scenes process of government? I think one thing that surprised me a lot is, well, the amount of trust that you guys put in me, because I didn't expect to be doing all the things I was doing, but I'm getting to learn so much. Like I'm helping write talking points. And I really like that you guys do the triangle method for your talking points. Uh -huh. I think that's so smart. And that's really a great way for presentations to work. That's great. So for someone who may not know what I'm talking about, I learned many years ago about a message triangle that people can't really take in 50 different reasons to vote for a bill or vote for a candidate or something, but a message triangle, three very succinct reasons why it's a good idea or something. And you have helped us craft some of those and been part of the conversations as we brainstorm. So that's been helpful. Um, to be clear, we don't give every intern as much responsibility as we give you. We just think you're wonderful. And that's, uh, oh, you know, you. we give you big jobs and you keep, you know, rocking them. So that's what we do. Yeah. Um, so what is a small lesson you've learned and what's a larger lesson from your internship? One thing that you taught me that I always keep in mind now, it's something you only said to me once, but it really stood out, was that you should always under promise and over deliver. So if there's something really big that you think is going to take a couple days to work on, say that it's going to take more than that by a couple of days and then get it done faster. And I think that's really great advice. And it's something that I try to do a lot. I love that because it's terrible when someone makes a promise and then they, you know, get it too late and you're counting on it and all that. So I love that. Um, so is that the little thing or the big thing? I think that's the big thing because I okay. try to do that a lot. Okay, and then, so what's the little thing? I guess it's not super little because it's something you remind me a lot, but up speaking. I know I what you're going to say. <laughs> I just did that. So up speaking is where at the end of your sentence where you go up instead of keeping it down to really drive the point home. Exactly. Ending a sentence with a question mark and when it should be a period or an exclamation yeah. point. So, yeah. Well, it's good that you're learning about it and trying to get, you know, more, yeah. more focused and do it less often. Um, talk about your plans for next year. Where are you thinking? Because I know I tried to push my alma mater faster and it wasn't quite the right fit. So why don't you tell our yeah. viewers what you're thinking about? I actually just committed last week. I tell committed me. to the UMD Scholars Program, cool. which is really cool. Congratulations, Thank I have you. heard. Thank That's you. fantastic, so it'll be a proud Terrapin. Yeah. That's fantastic, okay. Um, so second semester senior year, it can be hard to stay connected to schoolwork. How do you balance uh, school and your internship and the and Little Mermaid and kind of and time with friends and family? How do you, how do you manage all that? I try to do as much work as I can in school we have homeroom this year, which they implemented after COVID as a way to help kids transition back as a time to meet with teachers or do your homework. And I always try to get as much work done as possible during that time. I also, when I'm not in every scene at rehearsal, so I bring my homework and I work on it some then. And that way, when I get home at five o'clock, I'm usually exhausted from such a long day. So I try to do as much work as I can during the day so I can just relax, take some time to be with my friends or my family or just by myself afterwards. That's great. That's great. And you have a lovely family. Uh, I'm very proud that you're in my district. So that's that's yeah. a fun thing. Um, so do you give any thought to running for office someday? Yeah, I said that I wanted my dream is to be in the House of Representatives. If that happens, we'll see. I know that I want to study political science, but who knows what road I'll actually end up going down. It's so great. We need more women and more talented young women like you running mm -hmm. for office. So we talked about it a long time ago, but I'm really glad that this experience hasn't dissuaded or discouraged you in mm -hmm. any way and that it's still on the list. Yeah. Fantastic. I love that. I love that. Um, so uh, I have more questions. Um, tell me, uh, what do you like best about drama, about being in the school play? 
I love the community. That's, I feel like that's kind of an answer everybody says, but theater is just such a special tight knit community. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's so welcoming and so supportive, no matter what. I always say that you'll never find anywhere as supportive and welcoming as the girls dressing room backstage because we just all love each other so much and we hype each other up no matter what the situation is and there's nowhere else I'd rather be. I love that. I love that. So I did drama at Churchill. I was a Churchill bulldog. And uh, and not only is it that sense of community and I agree with you, but for me, it was also a sense of accomplishment, you know, creating a set design and costumes and a play and selling tickets and getting people there. That's a, that's a big deal. Uh, yeah. But the other um, piece that will serve you well if you continue in politics and maybe run for office um, is the ability to project and to public speak and to, you know, to emote and to connect with people. And so it has really helped me in my political career. And I would suspect yeah. it would do that for you as well. Yeah, it's made me so much more comfortable talking in front of people. I was just talking about this with someone a few days ago because they were so surprised that I love theater, but I want to go work in government because they were like, they're so different. Yeah. And I said, that's really not true. Theater teaches you so many skills that you need to work in government. It teaches you public speaking. It makes you comfortable in front of an audience. It also teaches you empathy, which is mm -hmm. really important. You're exactly right. I totally agree. What do your classmates think about your internship? A lot of them are really shocked. A lot of my friends who also have internships, we talk about what we do and they're all amazed by the work I'm doing. And every day when I go back to rehearsal, I'll be like, hey guys, I just did this today. And they're like, what? <laughs> That's crazy. So it's, that. it's pretty cool to see people's reactions. I love that. That's great. Um, talk about social media because that's such a, a part of your generation's um, method of communication. How much of it do you do and, and uh, what do you like best or least about it? Personally, I try not to use social media too much because it can have a lot of negative impacts on your mental health. But I will say I spend a lot of time on TikTok like most of my classmates and people my age. But overall, I use it as just kind of a way to stay in touch with people, especially now that I'm going to college, now that I know where I'm going, it's a great way to contact people and connect with people. And it's how everybody's finding their roommates now. So yep. that's really cool. And my friends who live farther away, once we go off to college, it'll be a way for us to keep it up with each other's lives. Right. Yeah. Back in the horse and buggy days, when I went to college, <laughs> we actually wrote letters and put them in an envelope and put a stamp on them and <laughs> yeah so different so much better so much easier um yeah, my college acceptance letters came via email and my parents were like not a single letter oh uh, yeah yeah no there's something special about getting a letter in the mail yeah so that's cool um any other hobbies anything you do in addition to everything else i love baking and music I'm constantly listening to music. I used to play guitar and sing and dance, which go into theater, but I there's rarely a time you will find me without my headphones in, whether it's while I'm baking, while I'm drawing or doing homework, or even while I'm doing my internship work, I'm always listening to music. Okay, so why isn't I haven't tried any of your baked goods then? Seems like we ought to make that part of your job description yeah. next time you come to an office. Next time I come into the office, I'll have to bring something. I think so. Uh, your right. brownies and, are really good. Ooh. I've had your brownies. Thank you. Thanks. They're special. With my special secret ingredient, don't say. And it's not that. People assume it's cannabis and it's never, it's never, <laughs> ever that. Um, so before we go to the Fast Five, uh, who are some of your favorite artists that you listen to while you're working or baking? My all-time favorite artist is Taylor Swift. She's a very big role model in my life, just encouraging everyone to be themselves and accept themselves. Nice. I also love Harry Styles and all the boys from One Direction. I listen to the, all of their music and uh -huh. I love all of them. I'm so glad you pick people I've actually heard of and know who they are. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't always happen. <laughs> That's great. Uh, before we... Uh, before we go to the fast five, one more question. Talk to me what it's been like as a young person and as a young white person in Montgomery County with Black Lives Matter and some of the, the social unrest and challenges that have faced our country in recent years as you were growing up, pivotal times in your life. 
I actually wrote my college essay on that, on my activism and about all the marches I've gone to. It's gun violence was a big thing, especially a couple of years ago with all the school shootings. That was really hit home because I was a high schooler and I knew tons of people whose schools were being threatened and that was a really scary thing. So for that, I tried to do as much as I could. I went to marches. I tried to go to all the discussions and everything. Black Lives Matter, the same thing. There was another school hosted a rally and I went to that. I told my friends about it. I told as many people as I could to get the word out. I'm actually president of a club at my school called Junior State of America. And it's all about debate and government. And we do a lot of activism stuff. So each week we have a debate on a different topic, whether it's abortion or so this week we're doing mental health in school and how we should address that. So it's really interesting. That's fantastic. Thank you. Well, that blows my first fast five question, which is what issue most what issue or issues most motivate you? So I'm gonna pinch hit as we as we start. But anyway, Jane Sanborn, your fast five. And you have come up with questions for others, but now I got to come up with the questions for you. Uh, yeah. so that's very fun. So if you could star in any play or any musical and be the star, be the lead, what play would you choose? Oh, I think I would have to say probably because it's been on my mind because I wanted to do it for our spring musical, Mamma Mia, because it's such a fun show and I love the music. That's great. Okay. Um, what is your favorite sport to play or watch? I don't really do a lot of sports, but I used to do gymnastics as a kid and I've always loved gymnastics. Um, so if you could travel anywhere in the world and money and time and the pandemic were no object, where would you wanna go? I would wanna go to England. I think it just seems really cool and like similar to America, but not too similar. It seems just like a really cool kind of change. And that's where, if I study abroad, that's where I wanna go. Okay, good. Um, and the, the question you always suggest that I ask people, and I rarely use this one, so I'm totally asking you, if there were a movie being made about your life, who would you hope would, would play you? As an actress, I would kind of wanna play myself but Ooh. if I had to pick a celebrity, I would probably, oh, it's, it's a hard one because you also have to think if they look like you. I would probably pick Millie Bobby Brown because she's around my age and I feel like she would do a really good job. She's very talented. Okay. No idea who that is. <laughs> she's in Stranger Things. Okay. A show I don't know either. <laughs> I was I was doing well so far. And the last question, Jane Sanborn, fabulous intern of mine, and you know this is coming. What is your hidden secret superpower? What is a skill or talent, something you're really good at that most folks can't do? I don't know if it, I wouldn't say it's something most folks can't do, but I've been told I'm really good at it. I'm a very empathetic and sympathetic person. I'm very good at comforting people and helping them and understanding them and supporting them. I love that. That's fantastic. Well, Jane, it has been such a pleasure having you on our yeah. team. And I'm so glad that we have months and months more to come. So, yeah. uh, so thank you for all that you have done uh, for my legislative agenda, for me, for our team, and thanks for all that you will do in the coming months. I wish you just nothing but lots of success and joy in your life. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I'm so happy to be working for you. Thank you. Thanks. Stay well. I'll see you very soon. See you soon. Take care. Bye.